I thought I knew everything about students. I thought I was a real sensitive teacher and was really intuitive to about students. And I got here and I found a world of cultures, um, kids who travel for most of their lives. Their diversity is, is not simply that they're from different countries, but that they don't even know where their home is. I've been uh, moving all over, all over the world and uh, I got to live in uh, Zaire and uh, uh, Norway and Madagascar and uh, I've been living in uh, Yokohama in Japan and Sapporo in Japan too. I'm not from anywhere. I mean, I, well, I was born in Chicago, raised in like Arizona and Missouri. I don't know. My parents still live in Niigata. I'm from Japan. Yeah, so me too. I'm from Japan. Japan. <laughs> we asked them their home city and they can't tell us really. It's where grandma lives. It's where they vacation. Maybe where they were born. Every time someone asks me where I'm from, I get all confused and I don't know what to say because I always just ask, do you mean where I consider home or do you mean where I was born? And usually I just say Tokyo because that's where I consider my home. A lot of kids who have bicultural issues are not sure who to, um, who to identify more with. That's one of the main issues that I think teachers and um, counselors and students deal with um, at international and American schools. Um, also keeping up with their own cultures, even though they don't identify with anyone in particular, keeping up with one that they might try to identify with, um, going back to that culture or staying within this culture um, gets pretty confusing sometimes for them. Um, it's very difficult for them to readjust and Going into university, it's a very different world for them than it is with, for the students that they're around in university. After I graduated from ASIJ, I returned to the United States for college, and I struggled a lot at first when I got back. I think I went through a sort of a definite kind of culture shock, a sort of projection of American culture. I felt very behind, like I didn't really know what was going on. How you doing? You know, if you don't didn't watch Friends, that doesn't mean anything to you, right? If you don't know who Joey is... And <laughs> the worst part about school is that so many people go in and out that once you made really good friends with one person, like they might be just gone at the end of the year. So and it just and then you keep losing touch with a lot of people. So you just it's a good place to meet new people, but then it's also a really good place to lose a lot of people. So yeah, okay, yeah. you can cry. <laughs> <laughs> my my friend. <laughs> I definitely think there's, you know, pluses and minuses to being brought up, or they call it like a third country kid, is that right? Like, um, you know, being brought up overseas. Like I said, I think I, I appreciate, you know, traveling and stuff now because I never got to it all when I was younger. And, um, but also I have a very well-established home, a place to call home. And I do have those kids that I grew up with, you know, since I was four years old and that kind of thing. My dad just came to us one day and told us just that we were going to move back. I was kind of upset because instead of just seeing one point of view, I'm meeting people from all over the world, you know, and just seeing different points of view. You know, you miss your friends when they move, especially after this year, a whole bunch of our friends moved. But then you meet new people, and so it's not, it's more like real life. Real life isn't with everyone always staying the same, so it's kind of nice. Um, I also think it's so neat though because these kids have contacts all over the world. You know, they, Tamina and Allie were talking about where they're going to have their high school reunion. You know, they want to have it in Hawaii or Las Vegas. You know, mine will be in Springfield, Ohio. <laughs> a really good experience for students living out the, outside of the United States who otherwise probably wouldn't get the opportunity to experience other cultures and to learn a new language um, and actually be in the environment to help boost the learning. I kind of like the international perspectives you get from going to ASIJ as well. You should come here and, and totally avoid eating Japanese food if you want to Definitely. Yeah. You, you can go to McDonald's every day if you I'm want. I'm an example of it. Do a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't eat at McDonald's, but I kind of just eat the the western stuff they sell at the grocery store.
I've been here for about a year and I have <laughs> never had sushi. I kind of just. I've been here for most of my life and I don't mind Japanese food. We eat a lot of tofu at my house, so. Ooh, tofu. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, guys. Well, I'm from Wyoming, well, but I was here for 13 years. 13 years, wow. Yeah. Speak Japanese? Nope. No. I know enough to get around, but that's about it. Like I mean, here. I didn't have an idea when I came here that it was real Americans. I wasn't even aware of the fact that international schools existed or how they ran or what they were about. I kind of forgot, you know, that you have like homecoming and prom. I guess I didn't really think that they would have that here. I don't know why, because it is like, you know, Americanized international school. They always want you to speak Japanese. Yeah. Like, just say something. It's like, <laughs> I don't know how to say anything. <laughs> My friends really haven't established the fact that I live in Japan <laughs> and not China. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of a problem. I got asked if I lived in a rice paddy once. <laughs> and yeah. I said no. Really weird questions from, like, you know, do you speak Japan? Is Hong Kong the capital of Japan? Like, right. just weird stuff like that. Are you Japanese? You know, I don't know. People always ask me, oh, so you lived in Japan? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, do you speak Chinese? Stuff like that, or they'll ask how long the drive was here, like if I drove here. It's just like ridiculous questions like that. I went back after seventh grade to visit, and they asked me if I ate fish eyes, and I didn't know anything about that. I just. Do they still have or how swords? How long does it take you to drive to yeah. Hong Kong? Um, <laughs> people still have swords in Japan. I have to show them my ninja skills just to prove I'm from Japan. How do you like Japan, or how do you like China? I get kind of confused between the two. How's that Great Wall? And uh, then they, then you, they just want you to say yes or no. They don't really want a discussion because it's not part of their world. So I just move in and get used to sort of talking about snow tires again. So I'm a little worried myself about going back. Uh, I'm sure that there's a point where I'll want to go home. Um, but even now, I'm finding it difficult when I go home, like the kids that are here, to actually readjust to what's going on in my hometown, um, but I'm sure that I will want to go home eventually, but staying abroad and going and living and working in different countries around the world is such, um, it's really, it's tempting, you know, there's so much out there, there's so much more that I want to experience, and just, just the cultural differences that I've seen in Southeast Asia, um, traveling, it just makes me want to go and actually experience that life for a while, um, so I don't know, home is tempting, but so it's staying, staying broad.